John McAfee saw a group of black-suited thugs on the dock next to his property in Belize at 10.30 p.m. They dispersed on the beach. Then, less than an hour later, all of McAfee's dogs had been poisoned. The next morning, McAfee's dogs passed away in a terrible manner. His beloved dogs, Dipsy, Lucky, Guerrero, and Mello, had died, and now he had to call his girlfriend to tell her about Mello. She didn't take the news well. Her reaction was pretty straightforward. If anyone messed with her dog, they were going to get it. Gregory Fall got it. His name might be known worldwide for its association with the popular antivirus software, but John McAfee's crazy life stretches far beyond the company he founded. McAfee was born in the UK, but moved to Virginia when he was young. Life wasn't easy. John's father was an alcoholic, and when McAfee was 15, committed suicide. Understandably, the event profoundly affected John for the rest of his life. During his college days, John took up drinking, but it didn't control his life the same way it did his father's. At least, not yet. At that point in his life, John was doing pretty okay. He was already an entrepreneur, running a business that sold magazines door to door. In the late 1960s, John worked at a company that coded punch card systems where he was exposed to the basics of early computing. He later used that knowledge to get a job at Missouri Pacific Railroad where he helped the company use an IBM computer system. However, McAfee was prone to distractions, and by distractions, we mean illegal contraband. At Missouri Pacific Railroad, he transitioned from alcohol to that harder contraband. He'd go to work while too busy tasting colors to be bothered with things like his job. One day, McAfee went to work after inhaling some distractions, but decided he wasn't living la vida loca as much as he wanted to. So he did what most people would do who wanted to increase the amount of loca in their la vida and took down an entire bag of psychedelics. His co-workers asked him questions, but he couldn't understand their words and thought the computer was scheduling train journeys to the moon. Soon, he was outside the building freaking out and hiding behind a trash can hearing voices. That was the last time John was ever at Missouri Pacific. Even years later, the experience had affected him so deeply that he still believed he was in Wonderland with Alice. But his addiction issues didn't stop his career from taking off. He worked as a programmer for NASA, focusing on the Apollo program. Then, John went to Univac as a software engineer and then to Xerox as an operating system architect. At work, he'd snort distractions and drink hard liquor at his desk. Sick of feeling scared and alone, he got sober in 1983. Personal computers were still new when the first computer virus hit them in 1986. McAfee studied the programs that infiltrated computers and decided to find a way to fight against them. McAfee created the first antivirus software in 1987 and his company, McAfee Associates Inc. People needed to buy his product and John knew how to get through to them. He was interviewed for different news channels where he warned of the collapse of industries and companies that couldn't recover if a virus infected their computer. At the time, this probably seemed like fear-mongering, but today it's just good sense. A computer virus called called Michelangelo appeared on the scene in 1992, and McAfee ensured that everybody knew about it. People didn't commonly buy antivirus software at the time, but after he claimed that the new virus would infect millions of computers, consumers rushed to find ways to keep their devices safe. As it turned out, McAfee's number was dramatically inflated. Michelangelo only infected tens of thousands of computers, but its legacy would be that it launched McAfee into a multi-million dollar business. By 1992, the company was incorporated, and in 1993, McAfee stepped down as chief executive to take on the role of chief technical officer. A year later, he sold his remaining shares for $100 million and distanced himself as much as possible. John no longer had any involvement with the company and resented that his name was still attached to it. When Intel merged with the company in 2014 and renamed the software Intel Security, he was ecstatic. He celebrated and publicly said he never wanted to be associated with the industry's worst antivirus software anymore. But that joy was short-lived. Intel demerged with McAfee, and John's name
name went back on the company. The financial collapse in 2008 hit hard. John's fortune shrank dramatically, and he sold almost everything he owned, including his private airport in New Mexico and a thousand acres of land in Hawaii. McAfee's legal troubles were adding up. Someone crashed their plane during a lesson at the flight school he owned and died. In a lawsuit against him, John was named the party responsible for the accident. Another person tripped on his property in New Mexico and sued as well. With the lawsuit stressing him out, John reasoned that if he was out of the country, he would be harder to target. And if he lost either of the cases, the plaintiffs would struggle to even collect their money. John wanted to go somewhere English-speaking that wasn't too far from the U.S., but still had stunning beaches. In the 90s, he visited the tiny nation of Belize and fell in love with it. So, off he ran. At first, living in Belize just made John feel a bit uneasy, but that feeling quickly grew up to be a full-blown paranoia. In Belize, John had decided to dive into the world of antibiotics. He must have been sick of dealing with viruses, wanting to build a product using plants to combat illnesses. He elicited help from microbiologist Allison Adenizio and started the company Quorum X. Adenizio quit her job and moved to McAfee's compound. She planned to further her research into plant-based antibiotics, but his eccentric behavior became frightening. John bragged about taking over the Belizean government and told Adonisio that he could have people killed or maimed. He often spoke of hitmen. He was volatile and violent. When she spoke to him about returning to the U.S., he handed her a glass of disgusting-tasting orange juice that he had spiked. With hazy but horrifying flashes of memories from the hours following having the drink, she knew it was time to leave. After Adonisio purchased her ticket home, McAfee cut the power and left to get a gun. She texted friends who snuck her out of his compound. The next day, she fled the country. McAfee was convinced that a local man, David Middleton, had broken into his home. McAfee simply couldn't abide by that. He felt that he needed to send a message to anyone that dared cross him. In a country where half of the police's salary is paid in bribes, any sort of weakness or disrespect could be dangerous. John called his former driver, Tom Manager, and ordered him to get three guys and find Middleton. The three men called McAfee, who wanted to see Middleton face to face. So they drug him into McAfee's vehicle, drove him into town and dumped him in a public place. When one of Middleton's friends, a guy named Mac-10, probably not his real name, learned of Middleton's assault, he came close to trying to kill McAfee himself. Instead, McAfee recruited him. McAfee had 11 dogs that roamed his property. They would bark, growl, and show aggression towards any passersby. His neighbor, Greg Fall, couldn't take it. He confronted McAfee about the dogs, even threatening to shoot them. McAfee did nothing to control his dogs, so Fall filed a formal complaint at the mayor's office about the dog. On November 9, 2012, McAfee realized someone had poisoned his dog. A few days later, Fall was dead. Someone took his iPhone and laptop from the scene, and whoever it was didn't seem to have to force entry. Police came to simply question McAfee as a person of interest, but when he saw them, John was sure their plan was to torment him. So he ran towards the sand, burying himself, and using a card box to cover his head, like you do. Despite being incredibly uncomfortable, he stayed there for hours. The police raided the compound and confiscated all weapons from the property. McAfee's groundskeeper told him when the police left and explained that they were investigating Fall's murder. McAfee claimed that was the first time he'd heard about it and claimed that the killer was actually looking for him, not Fall. But there's been talk that Mac-10, his bodyguard at the time, was paid $5,000 to kill Fall for poisoning McAfee's dogs. Mac-10 denied the allegations, but also went into hiding. McAfee refused to cooperate with the police, fleeing to Guatemala instead. A journalist from Vice took a photo of him after an interview and posted it online with the geotag still attached, giving his location to the authorities. McAfee later went to Guatemala City to seek political asylum and was denied. Not long after, authorities arrested him for illegally entering the country. The board, reviewing his plea for asylum, denied the request, and officers moved him to a detention center where he awaited deportation to Belize. A day later, John had two minor heart attacks and had to be hospitalized. Or, in true McAfee style, that's what he wanted those around him to believe. It turns out that he was actually just playing up his high blood pressure and anxiety. He faked the heart attacks so that his attorney had time to file a series of appeals to prevent his deportation to Belize. And with that, they chose to send him back to the U.S. instead. By January 2019, McAfee was on the run once again, this time to get away from U.S. authorities. After a grand jury convened to indict him and his wife, he moved onto a boat where he lived internationally before the IRS could even confirm the indictment's existence. Between 2014 and 2018, he earned millions of dollars but never filed his income tax returns. He admitted publicly that that he stopped filing tax returns in 2010 because McAfee believed taxes were illegal. These 
these views, however, were not shared by the IRS, who not only felt they were legal, but that John owed some money. The day after his arrest, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filed a complaint against McAfee for promoting initial coin offerings in a cryptocurrency pump and dump scheme. The scheme is intended to create a buying frenzy through misleading information to artificially inflate the price of a stock, or in this case, crypto. McAfee made himself look like an impartial investor, but made $23 million in digital assets from the scam. On Twitter, John claimed that Bitcoin would go up to $500,000 within three years. Then he said it would increase by $1 million by the end of 2020. Eventually, he tweeted to admit to everyone that he just said those things to get new users. By March 5th, 2021, the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York formally indicted McAfee. He was waiting in a Spanish jail for his extradition to the United States. A few weeks later, the Spanish National Court authorized the extradition, and McAfee proved that he would stop at nothing to avoid facing his charges. Hours after the court ordered his extradition, McAfee was found in his prison cell, and the autopsy ruled his death suicide. Rumors spread that he didn't commit suicide. John said multiple times that if anyone ever found him hanging from the ceiling, it would mean he was murdered. He was so sure of his impending doom that he had the word whacked tattooed on his arm, believing that to somehow be proof. An ex-girlfriend claimed that two weeks after his reported death, she received a phone call from John. He told her he wanted her to run away with him and had apparently paid people to fake his death and planned on hiding out in Texas. McAfee's widow dismissed the claims as unlikely. If he was on the run from the SEC and the IRS, she said, it wouldn't make sense that he would stay in the country. However, she also doubted that he had committed suicide and called for an investigation into his cause of death. McAfee was known for always being able to control his narrative. He enjoyed playing with the public's perception and over the years had become a master of manipulation. McAfee often toyed with the idea that what you thought you saw wasn't reality. Ultimately, no one really knows what the truth is, even his ex-wife's, because in John McAfee's world, anything was possible. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section below what you think is more likely, McAfee faking his own death or McAfee was taken out by the government.